So parents find out that their child is, you know, di divergent and they are themselves then put in an, in a state of terror because yeah. All of the messages that we have are, you know, you only have this short window and, you know, your child is only has a small time. Like you can save them if you do this. And, you know, there's a variety of factors going on, which, you know, some is for profit margins. Some is because people think they're right. Um, but our entire society, you know, as you alluded to before is, is kind of not accepting of, of diversity in the first place, but how, what is your advice to parents as their child is going through this process? Cause I can tell you the process is traumatic. Yeah, it was traumatic well, for her. It was traumatic for us. I felt horrible about kind of handing her over and saying, okay, tell me everything you think is not right with her. It felt terrible and it, uh, it kind of can degrade the relationship. So let, let me interject a couple uh, uh, things to support your negative viewpoint. <laughs> one, one is so much of the world of autism is about evaluation yeah. because it's part of, that's how medicine works. Evaluation triggers in the parent and in the individual threat. I mean, so yeah. you, you go, you get a test and the doctor, you go for a doctor's test, just, they're scaring you. Everything is about scaring you. And this goes back to this whole other history of autism and refrigerator mothers yeah the blaming of the parents and i believe that this just moved on to blame the parents that they haven't worked hard enough with their kids so rather than they're cold they're just not working hard enough and i've had colleagues people who work with autism who said you have to work every working moment so they create this anxiety and tension in the family without understanding that those cues that are being that are emanating from the mother, like what you're describing, all you need to do is, is visualize your own journey and your voice changes, your face changes. And I'm going to say your child's response to you will change as well because oh. you're, you lose your compassion because you move into a state of threat. So your ability to support is gone. So the, it's been a counterindication of the treatment models. They thought it was a mechanical treatment, not a compassionate treatment. And we have to understand that quality of our interaction is really important. And I think the behavioral models excluded this notion of this interpersonal quality and basically quantified the number of uh, gives and takes or whatever they're yeah. doing now, uh, or circles or whatever it is, it's still the same without understanding it's the quality, it's how you how are you sensed by your, your child? How's your child sense you? You sense your child every moment. Now, yeah. understand your child senses you. And even though the child's face may not be as expressive, that child is responding to your threats that's being, how you are feeling. The child's responding to the pandemic. Uh, and, and so this anxiety or fear state percolates. And we need to understand that we are both receptors and also projectors of these states to those that we really want to be helpful to. Uh, the problem that I keep going into is that uh, medicine and treatment became manualized. And so the interaction became less important than the delivery of the service. The delivery service could be billed. No one's evaluating the uh, qualitative aspect of the delivery except with their feet, they'll go to another practitioner. Uh, so the treatment models uh, th that have been shown to be useful are, they're useful in limited ways. How in the world that could anyone who's been involved in the world of autism think that behavioral modification techniques can make a person social? 